You might want to think hard if you were planning to choose one of the degrees I'm about to talk about because these are some of the hardest college majors. Hey everyone, my name is Hisham Khan and welcome to Income Over Outcome. Now one of the worst things that can happen to you in college is that you end up hating your degree because you're simply not interested in it or because it's super hard. That's why it's my goal to expose you to as many majors as possible. I did some research on the top 10 degrees people find to be the hardest and today I'm going to explain each one of those, why they're so hard and if all the hard work is truly worth it. You'd be surprised at how many of these degrees just aren't worth your time. Make sure you take a second to comment what degree you think is going to be the hardest and let's see who gets it right. Now let's get right into it. Coming in at number 10 is a degree I've talked a lot about on this channel, accounting. Now accounting is one of the harder business degrees out there. It's right up there with finance, but most people will tell you that accounting is a harder of the two because there are a ton of more rules you have to learn and so much more memorization. If you want to go into accounting, you also have to take your CPA exam, which means you need at least 150 college credits. And that's a lot because the average college graduate graduates with just 120 college credits. That means you'll have to take a bunch of extra classes or pick up a whole minor if you want to take the CPA right after you graduate. On average, accounting majors put in 17 hours a week into homework and studying. That's around three and a half hours a day. But if you watch my video on the best business majors, then you know accounting is very well worth it because of its stability and versatility. But we don't have time to talk through all of that today. So if you want, feel free to check out this video over here where I explain it in detail. In ninth place is math, which some of you might have expected to be on here. Now the reason math is so hard is because of all the memorization and how abstract it is. Research shows that math majors put in over 17 hours into studying every week, which I wasn't surprised to find out because I know some math majors who would put in literally hours into one homework question because of how complicated it was. You need to have a really analytical mind and amazing problem solving skills if you want to graduate with a math degree, and that's really beneficial in a bunch of different careers. To get a lot of jobs requiring a math degree, you need to have a master's, but the reason I like it is because there's still so many opportunities with just a bachelor's. You could go into things like consulting, data analysis, or even actual real sciences, which are all degrees you should be familiar with if you keep up with my channel. I have a whole bunch of videos talking about jobs that will pay you over $100,000 right after college. So if you haven't seen those already, definitely check them out. The next major is bioengineering. Now we all know the stereotype that engineers constantly talk about how intense their coursework is. And as far as bioengineering goes, that definitely holds true. Part of the reason bioengineering is so hard is because it covers so much information. You have to take essentially every single engineering course plus science courses. And those tend to be two of the hardest subjects you could take in college. So I definitely believe the research that shows the average bioengineer puts in around 18 hours a week into their degree. Now whether or not bioengineering is worth it is totally up for debate. A lot of people actually find success after college, but there's a ton of people who totally regret getting a bioengineering degree because demand just isn't that great. Plus you can get bioengineering jobs with a lot of other majors like electrical and even mechanical, and those are also a lot more versatile and they can get you into a bunch of other career paths. Bioengineering on the other hand kind of limits your options, but if it's something you're really interested in, then definitely look into it and make the decision decision for yourself. Speaking of electrical engineering, that's the next major on this list. Electrical is actually a really common degree these days, and the main reason it's so hard is because it's one of the more abstract engineering degrees out there. I mean, think about it. You can't exactly see electricity, which makes it much harder to grasp the concepts, unlike mechanical or even civil, that are really hands-on. Definitely don't major in electrical though if you aren't willing to put in the work. On average, electrical engineering students put in around 18 hours a week into schoolwork. Overall though, the grind is well worth it because you have decent job prospects. Now if you want to learn more about electrical engineering, like how much it pays, or even about some other engineering degrees that might be easier, then feel free to check out this video over here where I rank the 10 best engineering majors. At number 6 we have neuroscience, which is a degree I've noticed a lot more people getting recently. Now I personally don't recommend getting this degree because I know a lot of people who got a neuroscience degree just because they want to go to med school or something like that. People find neuroscience to be one of the cooler pre-med degrees because you learn all about the brain and you can actually apply what you learn to the human body. But the downside is that there's virtually no demand for this degree at the bachelor's level. That's because with any hard science degree, you can only touch on the basics at the undergrad level. If you want to go in the sciences, you need to have at least a grad degree and preferably a PhD. Most of the kids I know who graduated with a neuroscience degree and couldn't get into grad school really 
struggled after college. A lot of them worked odd jobs at places like coffee shops, and others ended up volunteering at labs for no pay or for really, really low pay, which absolutely sucked because these were some of the hardest working people I knew. On average, neuroscience majors need to put in at least 18 hours a week into studying. In my opinion, it's really risky to dedicate that much time to something that might not work out. If you want to learn about neuroscience, then you should major in something that's more in demand and then pick up a minor in neuroscience or even join a neuroscience club on campus or a research lab. That way you aren't putting all of your eggs into one really risky basket. One thing you can do to really help your future success though is go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I'll keep you up to date to the best careers and even teach you how to handle your money once you get that job. Now this next one really caught me off guard. It's astronomy. After all, isn't it just staring at stars and planets in the sky? I didn't really get it, but then I did some research and figured out that astronomy is super technical. It involves a ton of physics and math, which tend to be some of the most intense courses you could take in college. On average, students study for around 19 hours a week. That's almost 4 hours a day. Imagine going through a hard day of classes and then coming back and still having 4 hours of studying to do. I don't know about you, but I would be absolutely miserable. What's sad though is all the hard work you put into an astronomy degree is probably not worth it. Because like I said with the other hard sciences, you need at least a master's degree and ideally a PhD if you want any job related to astronomy. And if you're an OG on my channel, then you know exactly what my philosophy with college degrees is. It's pointless to spend money on a college degree that isn't in demand, because then your only options will be to settle for a low paying job or spend more money on another degree, which might not always work out. It's best to get a degree that keeps your options open, whether that's going to grad school or getting a job. That way if one path doesn't doesn't work out, you always have something to fall back on. Some good options at the undergrad level that still allow you to go into astronomy are things like computer science, engineering, and even physics. There's also a lot of other options and I spoke about some in my video on the best STEM degrees right here, so check that out if you want to. Now if you do manage to get your PhD, you'll make a decent amount of money, with the average astronomer making around $111,000, but remember, that's only after decades of school. Holding the number 4 spot is chemistry. Now I I couldn't even imagine dedicating all four years of college to chem because for me, just gen ed chemistry was difficult enough. Just like neuroscience, a lot of people who are pre-med end up choosing chem because they think it looks good for med school, but that's most definitely not the case. The best thing you can do for med school is to choose the degree that you like, that will get you a high GPA, and that will help you stand out. With a degree like chemistry, you're not exactly helping yourself because tens of thousands of students applying to med school have the same exact degree, and the average chem student has a lower than average GPA, but they put in above average effort to get that. With over 19 hours of extra studying every single week, I could honestly go on and on about med school for hours, but we can't get too off topic over here, so feel free to check out this video over here where I talk about some common misconceptions about pre-med majors and what the best pre-med degrees actually are. Another huge downfall of chemistry is that like other hard sciences, it's really difficult to get a job right out of undergrad. So you'll work super hard to get your degree and probably spend a ton of money on it as well, but the return on that investment wouldn't be that great. Like I said earlier, it's a little bit like neuroscience, the skills you learn at the undergrad level just aren't in demand in the job market. So trust me, you don't want to risk not getting into med school than having to sell for a really low paying job when you spend tens of thousands of dollars on a degree. Number 3 is another hard science degree, but unlike chemistry and neuroscience, this one is actually great to get a job right after undergrad. It's physics. Now a lot of people say physics is the hardest science major you can get because it deals with abstract concepts and it's rooted heavily in math. I know a handful of people who spend just one semester in physics and then they had to drop it. So it's clear to me that you need to have a really special way of thinking if you want to be successful as a physics major. On average, physics majors put in around 19 hours a week into studying, which is insane. But the upside is that physics gives you so much knowledge and if you manage to get through all of the coursework, then companies are willing to hire you because they know just how smart you are and what value that can bring, which can give you a real upper hand against other college students. One of the most common career paths for physics majors with the right internships is engineering, but physics actually beats an engineering degree because it gives you so many more options. Physics majors can go into data analytics, the energy industry, tech, and of course you can get your PhD and become a physicist. The possibilities are truly endless, and salaries are all over the place because 
because of all the job options. But on average, a physicist makes around $122,000 a year. This second major might really surprise you. It's architecture. Now I had a really close friend who was an architect major and the grind was absolutely insane. She pulled more all-nighters than anyone I knew simply because architecture is super hands-on. With most majors, you just learn what you need to and then get tested on it. But with architecture, not only do you get tested, but you have to show that you can actually put into practice what you learned. That means that on top of your classes and normal studying, you're going to have constant projects where you have to do things like build full-scale models of buildings, and those take days to complete. Architecture majors put in around 22 hours a week on top of their classes. That's almost four and a half hours a day. Now, I don't say this to discourage you from majoring in architecture. It's just a reality that you're going to face. My friend absolutely loved her major because she was super passionate about it. She didn't mind losing countless days of sleep because she was super into what she was doing. As long as you have that passion, you'll be fine no matter how difficult your degree is. I have to say though, one huge downside of architecture is it's not the best paying after you're done with school. You have to get licensed as an architect in your state, and in order to do that, you usually need a few years of work experience, and those entry-level jobs that get you that experience tend to pay around $50,000 a year. Now that's most definitely not that bad, but it's not as great as a lot of the other majors I talk about on this channel. Once you do get your license though, the average salary is $85,000. And in a lot of states, you can actually earn well over six figures. And finally, in the number one spot, we have chemical engineering, which is basically a combination of everything that's hard about chemistry and everything that's hard about engineering to create one super intense major. But the engineering portion of this actually makes this degree super practical. You could work for a company like P&G helping them make chemical products or even food. And they tend to be some of the highest paid engineers with an average salary of $109,000. It's going to be super difficult to do and you're gonna to have to make a ton of sacrifices. But I would say all that grind would be worth it at the end of the day. Now, if you're still watching this video, let me know so I can reply to your comment. Make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video if you haven't already. I'll see you next time, but until then, peace.